The Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite was a robotic spacecraft operated by NASA. The mission was conceived as a low-cost means of determining the nature of hydrogen detected at the polar regions of the Moon. Launched immediately after discovery of lunar water by Chandrayaan-1, the main LCROSS mission objective was to further explore the presence of water ice in a permanently shadowed crater near a lunar polar region. It was successful in confirming water in the southern lunar crater Cabeus. It was launched together with the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter (LRO) on June 18, 2009, as part of the Shared Lunar Precursor Robotic Program, the first American mission to the moon in over 10 years. Together, LCROSS and LRO form the vanguard of NASA's return to the Moon, and are expected to influence United States government decisions on whether or not to colonize the Moon. LCROSS was designed to collect and relay data from the impact and debris plume resulting from the launch vehicle's spent Centaur upper stage and data collecting shepherding spacecraft striking the crater Cabeus near the south pole of the Moon. Centaur had nominal impact mass of 2003. 305 kilograms, 5,081 pounds, and an impact velocity of about 9,000 kilometers per hour, 5,600 miles per hour, releasing the kinetic energy equivalent of detonating approximately two tons of TNT, 8.86 gigajoules. LCROSS suffered a malfunction on August 22, depleting half of its fuel and leaving very little fuel margin in the spacecraft. Centaur impacted successfully on October 9, 2009, at 11:31 Coordinated Universal Time. The shepherding spacecraft descended through Centaur's ejectate plume, collected and relayed data, impacting six minutes later at 11:37 Coordinated Universal Time. Contrary to media reports at the time, neither the impact nor its dust cloud could be seen from Earth using the naked eye or telescopes. Topic: <laughs> Mission. LCROSS was a fast-track, low-cost companion mission to the LRO. The LCROSS payload was added after NASA moved the LRO from the Delta II to a larger launch vehicle. It was chosen from 19 other proposals. LCROSS's mission was dedicated to late American broadcaster Walter Cronkite. LCROSS launched with the LRO aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on June 18, 2009, at 2132 Coordinated Universal Time, 1732 Eastern Daylight Saving Time. On June 23, four and a half days after launch, LCROSS and its attached Centaur booster rocket successfully completed a lunar swingby and entered into polar Earth orbit with a period of 37 days, positioning LCROSS for impact on a lunar pole. Early in the morning on August 22, 2009, LCROSS ground controllers discovered an anomaly caused by a sensor problem, which had resulted in the spacecraft using up 140. 40 kilograms 309 pounds of fuel more than half of the fuel remaining at the time according to Dan Andrews the LCROSS project manager our estimates now are if we pretty much baseline the mission meaning just accomplish the things that we have to do to get the job done with full mission success we're still in the black on propellant but not by a lot Lunar impacts, after approximately three orbits, occurred on October 9, 2009, with the Centaur crashing into the Moon at 11.31 Coordinated Universal Time and the Shepherding spacecraft following a few minutes later. The mission team initially announced that Cabeus A would be the target crater for the LCROSS dual impacts, but later refined the target to be the larger, main Cabeus crater. On its final approach to the Moon, the Shepherding spacecraft and Centaur separated October 9, 2009, at 1.50 Coordinated Universal Time. The Centaur upper stage acted as a heavy impactor to create a debris plume that rose above the lunar surface. Following four minutes after impact of the Centaur upper stage, the Shepherding spacecraft flew through this debris plume, collecting and relaying data back to Earth before it struck the lunar surface to produce a second debris plume. 
The impact velocity was projected to be 9000 kilometers per hour, 5600 miles per hour or 2.5 kilometers per second. The Centaur impact was expected to excavate more than 350 metric tons, 390 short tons of lunar material and create a crater about 20 meters, 65 feet in diameter to a depth of about 4 meters, 13 feet. The Shepherding spacecraft impact was projected to excavate an estimated 150 metric tons, 170 short tons, and create a crater 14 meters, 46 feet in diameter to a depth of about 2 meters, 6 feet. Most of the material in the Centaur debris plume was expected to remain at lunar altitudes below 10 kilometers, 6 miles. It was hoped that spectral analysis of the resulting impact plume would help to confirm preliminary findings by the Clementine and Lunar Prospector missions, which hinted that there may be water ice in the permanently shadowed regions. Mission scientists expected that the Centaur impact plume would be visible through amateur class telescopes with apertures as small as 25 to 30 cm 10 to 12 inches. But no plume was observed by such amateur telescopes. Even world-class telescopes such as the Hale telescope, equipped with adaptive optics, did not detect the plume. The plume may have still occurred but at a small scale not detectable from Earth. Both impacts were also monitored by Earth-based observatories and by orbital assets, such as the Hubble Space Telescope. Whether or not LCROSS would find water had been stated to be influential in whether or not the United States government pursues creating a moon base. On November 13, 2009, NASA confirmed that water was detected after the Centaur impacted the crater. Spacecraft The LCROSS mission took advantage of the structural capabilities of the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Secondary Payload Adapter ring used to attach LRO to the Centaur upper stage rocket. Mounted on the outside of the ESPA were six panels that hold the spacecraft's science payload, command and control systems, communications equipment, batteries, and solar panels. A small monopropellant propulsion system was mounted inside of the ring. Also attached were two S-band omnidirectional antennas and two medium-gain antennas. The mission's strict schedule, mass, and budget constraints posed difficult challenges to engineering teams from NASA Ames Research Center and Northrop Grumman. Their creative thinking led to a unique use of the ESPA ring and innovative sourcing of other spacecraft components. Usually, the ESPA ring is used as a platform to hold six small deployable satellites. For LCROSS, it became the backbone of the satellite, a first for the ring. LCROSS also took advantage of commercially available instruments and used many of the already flight verified components used on LRO. LCROSS is managed by NASA's ARC and was built by Northrop Grumman. The LCROSS preliminary design review was completed on September 8, 2006. The LCROSS mission passed its mission confirmation review on February 2, 2007, and its critical design review on February 22, 2007. After assembly and testing at Ames, the instrument payload, provided by Ecliptic Enterprises Corporation, was shipped to Northrop Grumman on January 14, 2008, for integration with the spacecraft. LCROSS passed its review on February 12, 2009. Topic: Instruments. The LCROSS science instrument payload, provided by NASA's ARC, consisted of a total of nine instruments: one visible, two near-infrared, and two mid-infrared cameras; one visible and two near-infrared spectrometers, and a photometer. A data handling unit (DO) collected the information from each instrument for transmission back to LCROSS mission control. Because of the schedule and budget constraints, LCROSS took advantage of rugged, commercially available components. 
The individual instruments went through a rigorous testing cycle that simulated launch and flight conditions, identifying design weaknesses and necessary modifications for use in space, at which point the manufacturers were allowed to modify their designs. Results The impact was not as visually prominent as had been anticipated. Project manager Dan Andrews believed that this was due to pre-crash simulations that exaggerated the plume's prominence. Because of data bandwidth issues, the exposures were kept short, which made the plume difficult to see in the images in the visible spectra. This resulted in the need for image processing to increase clarity. The infrared camera also captured a thermal signature of the booster's impact. Topic: <inaudible> Presence of water. On the 13th of November 2009, NASA reported that multiple lines of evidence show water was present in both the high-angle vapor plume and the ejecta curtain created by the LCROSS Centaur impact. As of November 2009, the concentration and distribution of water and other substances required more analysis. Additional confirmation came from an emission in the ultraviolet spectrum that was attributed to hydroxyl fragments, a product from the breakup of water by sunlight. Analysis of the spectra indicate that a reasonable estimate of the concentration of water in the frozen regolith is on the order of 1%. Evidence from other missions suggests that this may have been a relatively dry spot, as thick deposits of relatively pure ice appear to present themselves in other craters. A later, more definitive, analysis found the concentration of water to be 5.6 plus or minus 2.9 percent by mass. On August 20, 2018, NASA confirmed ice on the surface at the Moon's poles. Topic. Imagery Topic Awards LCROSS has received numerous awards for its technical, managerial, and scientific accomplishments. 2010, Northrop Grumman Northrop Grumman Corporate 2010 Award for Excellence Northrop Grumman Team 2010, Popular Mechanics Magazine's 2010 Breakthrough Award for Innovation in Science and Technology 2010, NASA Honor Award, Group Achievement, LCROSS Science Team 2010, NASA Honor Award, Group Achievement, LCROSS Mission Operations Team 2010, NASA Honor Award, Group Achievement, for Outstanding Professionalism, Innovation in Outreach and Education, and for Integrating Outreach for Two Missions into One Launch, LRO, LCROSS, LPRPEPO Teams 2010, NASA Honor Award, Exceptional Achievement Medal, Rusty Hunt 2010, NASA Honor Award, Outstanding Leadership Medal, Dan Andrews and Tony Colaprete 2010, NASA Honor Award, Group Achievement, LCROSS Science and Payload Team 2010, NASA Ames Honor Award, Category Exceptional Achievement Ken Galal 2010, Northrop Grumman as Sector President's Award, Category Operational Excellence Northrop Grumman Team 2010, Aviation Week Laureate Award nominee category space 2010 space foundation john l jack swigert jr award for space exploration 2010 national space society space pioneer award 2009 category science and engineering 2010 northrop grumman distinguished engineering project achievement award 55th annual engineering council 2010 nasa oce systems engineering award nasa office of chief engineer 2010 aviation week 2009 program excellence award category system level production and sustainability Entertainment 2009, Northrop Grumman Technical Services Award for Excellence, 2009, LCROSS Team 2009, NASA Ames Honor Award, Category Team LCROSS Team 2009, NASA Ames Honor Award, Category Engineering Tom Luzod, 2009, NASA Honor Award, Exceptional Achievement Medal, Dan Andrews, 2009, NASA Honor Award, Group Achievement, LCROSS 
NAS Project Team 2009 NASA Systems Engineering Excellence Award, Darren Foreman, Bob Barber 2008, ILEWG International Lunar Exploration Technology Award, for the development of advanced technologies within hard constraints of short time and cost 2008, NASA Ames Honor Award, Category Engineering Bob Barber 2008, Northrop Grumman Mission Excellence Award, LCROSS Spacecraft Team 2007, NASA Ames Honor Award, Group Achievement, Successful Completion of CDR 2006, NASA Ames Honor Award, Category Project Management Dan Andrews See also List of artificial objects on the Moon Lunar water Project A-119 A higher-powered lunar excavator, a nuclear explosive device mission of the 1950s, never attempted. <laughs>